Mark chapter number 1, and I'm going to start reading down in verse number 38. And Jesus says, and he tells them in verse 38, And he said, un, he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and said, saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith, forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we are just thankful that we have uh, your word to be able to open up and read from tonight. Lord, we're thankful for everything you've blessed us with. Lord, I just ask you to just help me now be with what you've laid upon my heart to preach. Lord, help me to convey it here to your people, Lord, that it can be a help and encouragement to each and every one of us here tonight. Lord, I ask you to just meet with us and help us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I want to look at by way of introduction is we see that he talks about in verse number 38 and verse number 39. He tells him he wants to go into other cities. And he, we know then that he talks about in verse number 39, he goes out through all of Galilee. What was he doing? He was preaching. You know, we see the preaching that Jesus done. You know, I've heard it talked about behind this pulpit. Hopefully we've all thought about it before. Could you imagine Brother Phil listening to the greatest preacher that there probably ever was? Not probably, there was ever was. Preaching about himself, preaching about what was going on. Just imagine going and listening to Jesus be able to talk about Jesus, Just Jesus being able to preach the word and sharing it with those people. And, and, and we know, and we'll get into this even a little bit later, uh, of how powerful a preacher that he was, the fact that we constantly see many, many people come to listen to him. You know, I talked about this past Sunday, that book that I, I've gotten talking about men who've seen revival. And you read about some of those men that would travel back in the 17 and 1800s and thousands upon thousands of people come out and listen to them preach. Why? Because it's the preaching is what gets it done. So we see the preaching there in verses 38 and 39. Now we see the problem that's come up here. And there came to him, verse number 40, a leper uh, beseeching him, kneeling down to him, saying, If thou wilt, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. What are we doing with our problems? And we're going to get to that in the, in the message a little bit later. But we see the problem this man here has. He's a leper. He has leprosy. And we know back then that, that we, we know that uh, what leprosy kind of symbolized. And we know that as a leper, you didn't have any dealings with anybody else. You were, you were cast off and left by yourself. So we see the problem. But the best answer to that problem is, is we see his placement in verse number 40. Or in, yeah, verse number 40. And what does he say? And kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Our problem too many times when we kneel down to pray isn't if thou wilt. It's just, Jesus, you can do this. You should do it. God, I want this. Therefore, you should do it. When was the last time we truly got down and just asked, God, if thou wilt, I know you can do this. I know you can touch my family. I know you can touch my friend. I, I know you can open their eyes to salvation. Excuse me. I know you can help me. But if thou wilt, I request it. If thou wilt, Lord, I would ask for your help. And he gets down, we see as he's kneeling down before Jesus, telling him, if, if you'll do this, you can cleanse me. He didn't come to him uh, uh, begging him, so to speak, just saying how much he needed it. He didn't come to him demanding that he make him clean. I mean, he could, what did we read up here? We didn't read it uh, in verse number, we did read in verse number 39, and he preached in their synagogues throughout all of Galilee and cast out devils. So now Jesus has gone through, we know, all through Galilee. No doubt as he not only cast out devils, he's probably healed other people, he's probably touched other people, he's probably done all these things, these other people. This leper could have come, hey, look, you did this for everybody else, now you need to do this for me. That's not the attitude he came. But too many times that's our attitude we come. God, well, you've blessed somebody over here with a new car, how come I don't have one? 
God, you bless somebody over here with the new house. God, you bless somebody over here with this. How come I don't have this? We might not openly say it, but too many times we allow it to creep into the back of our mind and we think it, and then we begin to feel sorry for ourselves because we don't have the blessings that somebody else does. This leper just comes, Lord, Jesus, if thou wilt, thou can't make me clean. And when he's willing to come and just humble himself and kneel down before the Lord, when we're willing to come and humble ourselves and kneel down before the Lord, we see the product of that faith. And Jesus moved with compassion, in verse 41, put forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And the awesome thing here, Brother, uh, uh, brother Donald, and as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. There wasn't no waiting period. There wasn't no grace period. There wasn't no, well, if you'll go out and you'll uh, live this life for the next week, then you'll be clean. He didn't have to go dip himself so many times. Immediately, he was cleansed. And we see now in verse 44 and 45, we see the public that he goes out and tells. And saith unto him in verse 44, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priests, and offer thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. Now I wonder, this just just me thinking out loud, this wasn't even the, the point of this uh, uh, little point right here in introduction, this hadn't even crossed my mind until now. I wonder how hard it would be for us to come in here on Sunday or Monday or any other day next week of revival if we had published it much the same way this leper had. Can we not say Jesus has done a lot for us? Can we not look at our lives and see not only just where he brought us from and saving us, just but the blessings that he's given us? I can tell you, Brother Phil, where I came from, and never in my wildest dreams would I ever have the things that I do now. God's been good to me. How much are we willing to publish that? If we was to publish that so we see everybody else and let everybody know what kind of God we serve. I mean, it's what he said. He went and published it uh, as much and to blaze abroad the matter. Just told everyone that he could come across. And everybody was so interested now. It says Jesus couldn't even go more go into the city. What if we would share that much? But I'm not going to preach on any of that. Why did that leper go to Jesus? It doesn't say Jesus went to him in verse number 40. And there came a leper to him. When you read the stories, and we could have pulled multiple stories out when Jesus goes through preaching, we could have found all kinds of stories, and you see people come to him uh, with devils and with leprosy here and, and blind by all these people. Why did they come to Jesus? Because they seen him. Because they were looking for him. Because they seen him. Because they had heard other people. And that's what I've already told you, the title of the message. Can you see Jesus? Can you see Jesus? First off, can you see Jesus in your pardon? In Micah chapter number 7, and verse 18 and 19, he says, Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy." He will turn again, he will have compassion upon us, he will subdue our iniquities, and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Can you see Jesus in your pardon? If all you see is a baptism, you don't have that pardon. If all you see is church membership, you don't have that pardon. If you can't go back to that time that you met Jesus, you don't have the pardon you need. You might have a feeling of forgiveness, but you don't have the pardon that Jesus gives that's going to secure your eternal being. You know, I talked about, uh, I was talking to Caitlin a little bit tonight while we was at home before we come to church, and I said it's amazing that we want to sometimes profess to be saved, but we've adopted all the other religions. You know, Church of Christ believes that you've got to be baptized in order to be saved. And we'll think, well, I'm all right, I've been baptized, and I'm a member of a church. We know the Catholic Church thinks you have to be able to do so many good things. We think, well, if I've done so many good things, then I'm going to be all right. And it's amazing how much you listen to out in the world of how many people believe that one, Brother Brian. Well, if my, my good outweighs my bad. I'm going to be okay. No, that's not it, folks. If you can't see Jesus in your pardon, you're in trouble. 
Plain and simple, you're going to die and spend eternity in an ever-burning hell if you can't see Jesus in your pardon. Not only can you see Jesus in your pardon, can you see Jesus in your past? How many times, and we don't, you don't have to raise your hands. It might do us good to wake up a little bit tonight if you want to raise your hand. How many times have you ever been faced with something, Brother Seth, that even though you're young, did you have those things that you went with through in your life and you thought, I don't know how I'm ever going to get through this. This is it. There's no way I'm going to get through this. But yet here we are. Here we are, Brother Phil. Why? Because Jesus. We, how many times and we go back to those things that we're faced with and we just we have no idea how we're going to get through it. We have no idea how we're going to be able to face tomorrow. We have no idea how we're going to be able to get past things. But then Jesus, Brother Clint. How many times can you look back and see Jesus in your past? That you just you, you truly thought there's just nothing I can do to get past this. And if we, too many if we think back to those times, what do we do? Hopefully we was like that leper. We kneeled down and just prayed and said, Lord, if thou wilt, you can help me. Lord, if thou wilt, you can take care of this bill. Lord, if thou wilt, you can help me get past this. Lord, if thou wilt, you can get me past whatever it is that you may be going through. Why? Because Jesus. You know, there's so many things that we, we go through in our life and, and we immediately, I don't want to say immediately, but we just begin to fall apart. We begin to twiddle our thumbs and bite our nails and, and just get so nervous thinking, how are we gonna, how's this going to work out? I just don't, can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I used to say over at the jail, if we see that light at the end of the tunnel, we're convinced it's a train about to run us over. But, but we, we fail to realize and remember sometimes, he got us through last time. He'll get us through this time too. And if not, if, 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 we, if it be His will that we're going to uh, pass on into eternity, well, then we win anyway. We're going to go spend eternity with Him. Can you see Jesus in your past? Too many times I think we try to look back at things in our life when Jesus has, has touched us and He's helped us get past something, and we want to look back and we immediately want to try to begin to just explain it away. Well, I didn't think I could, and I know this happened, but that's because this happened. That's because whatever may be happened, instead of giving credit where credit is due and seeing how the Lord works certain things out in our life. We all have things that we can go back and look and say there's no other way to explain it besides just the fact that God worked it out. God had his hands in things. God was able to, to work his way around whatever it may be. You know, it's, it's been now, um, this, this past week was a year ago that I can still remember just as much as yesterday, Brother Donald, walking out to get into the car that Sunday morning, Miss Mary, coming to church. And Tina comes out and she gets in the car and I look at her and I was like, what's Bella doing? And Bella walks to the door and just stands there and looks. And she just, she's just looking at us like she was confused. I'm like, what is she doing? And then she comes out and she gets in the car instead of climbing up in the car and sitting down, she climbs up and she's in the seat and she's just like sitting there like she don't know how to turn around. And we come to church that morning and we keep her home that night and, and, and just by the grace of God, instead of going, uh, you know, Miss Annette's the one that told us, instead of coming here, go to children's and let them run more tests. We have no idea how close we was to her not being here today. But God... God gets you through those things. God knows exactly what we need. God knows how to answer those things that we don't even know about. That when we can look back in the past. So therefore, why is it that we sweat so many things now knowing what God has already brought us through? Can you see Jesus in your past? The third, can you see Jesus in your present? In Psalms chapter 119 and verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Who's leading your path? Plain and simple. Who's leading your path right now? How many decisions do we go out and make on a daily basis and not give a second thought to what God would have for us? How many times do we go to apply? I'm not, I'm not saying this to be... Brother Josh told me about this. this I'm not saying this to be mean. He said, Miss Brittany went and had a job interview tonight, so I'm not preaching to Miss Brittany, okay? I promise I'm not. How many times do we go put in for a job just because it might be more money? 
I told Brother Josh tonight, I have a job that, that I drove by today, had, you know, took a different way home, because I had a couple errands to run, I seen this great, I mean, it's a huge banner hanging inside this factory. $23 an hour to start, Brother Phil, and $31 an hour after you're fully trained. Like, man, that's, that'd be a pretty nice pay raise. But I couldn't do third shift again. I'm too old. I would die. But how many times do we make those decisions, Brother Brian, just because we think, hey, that's more money. I'm only 10 minutes from home. I could make this much more on the hour. Why not? It, God's got to be in that, right? He wants me to have more money. Then I can give more money to his church. And we'll try to explain those things in our head and not truly ask God to lead us. How many people have we known just in this church that have, have, have taken and went out someplace else? Well, I, you know, God wants me to go here. God wants me to go there. And you see them now, they're not even in church anywhere. They didn't have Jesus in their presence. It was all based off of emotion. It was all based on what they wanted to do, what they thought was right, not what God truly wanted. We see, or can we see Jesus in our presence? You now, I talked about applying for that job here uh, a month or so ago, whatever it was. And then after the gentleman actually did call me, uh, after I knew I didn't get it and who and somebody else had, had much more experience than me had got the job, uh, I seen there was two other positions open uh, that was the same position, just different branches of that bank, other places. And I remember asking, texting, you know, Sister Tina and asking her, you know, what do you think? And she's like, that's up to you. She's like, you got to do, you know, I was like, you know what? But she's, she's right. She had prayed and I had prayed. You know, God would make the decision easy. Well, he made the decision easy, Brother Phil. didn't get it. That's pretty easy. If they don't offer it to you, there ain't no much easier way. So why then would I go push it and now try to find a second or third option? You know, God knows what we need. God knows where we need to go. You know, is, is, can we see Jesus in our presence? How often do we seek him for those decisions in our life? How often do we seek him for uh, uh, the path in our life. How often do we seek Him and His Word and try to draw wisdom out of His Word in our present day that we live? Can you see Jesus, fourthly, in your peace? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and verse number 2, Grace unto you and peace, where is it? From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, first Timothy chapter 1, and verse number 2, Unto Timothy, my, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from... God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. And then again in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace, where? From the God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. And then he tells us in John chapter 14 and verse number 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Do you see Jesus in your peace? When you are troubled by things, when you do see what's going on out in the world, it is very easy to be out in the world and become very uneasy today. It is very easy to lose your peace when you see some of the nonsense that goes on. Where does your peace come from? It shouldn't be in some self-help book. It shouldn't be even in, uh, in our job or in, in whatever it may be. Instead, it needs to come from the Lord. Instead, we should get in here and know that his Bible tells us, we just read was three or four verses right there, that our peace should come from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. He will give us the peace that nothing else can give. We know the Bible that tells us what? The peace that passeth all understanding. When you can't understand it, God will give you peace. When you don't understand why it's happening to you, God will give you peace. When you don't understand why something's come into your life, God can give you peace on it. God will give you peace. Look, I, I, I've shared this before, and I've sat here trying to fight and fight and fight in my mind not to share it, but God won't let it leave my mind. I've talked before about coming in here on a Wednesday night, and Brother Doug had texted me and asked me to preach and to pull in and see Brother Brian and Sister Veronica's van. They just lost a child. What, what possibly am I going to preach, Brother Phil, that's going to be a help to them? They didn't need my help. They already had the peace of God. They had Jesus give them their peace. They already had the peace that they needed, Brother Donald. Because, why? Because they knew where their peace come from. It wasn't going to come from my preaching. It wasn't even going to come from us. While, while I'm, uh, there's no doubt in my mind they're thankful for their church family. They love us as much as we love them, but they knew their peace came from Jesus. 
can you see Jesus in your peace? The fifth thing, I started to tell you I had a top ten tonight, but I was afraid you'd get nervous and think it was going to be here for a while. But there's only seven. Can you see the peace? Or can you see Jesus? Can you see the peace? Can you see Jesus in your productivity? In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 6, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Who are you trusting in to give the increase? I would be willing to bet, and, and I, I'm pretty confident in making this statement, when we go out on Monday nights, none of us believe that we are the one that's going to give the increase. Those people did not come and visit on Sunday night because of something we did. Yes, we physically went out and hung the track, but it was God that we already know was working on their heart about finding a church somewhere. It was God that worked on their heart to say, hey, let's get up and let's go out tonight and let's go visit Emmanuel Baptist Church. It was God that put that thought in their heart. And see, when we realize, you know, I, I did a couple of devotions here in the past couple of weeks about getting discouraged in God's work. Why can we get discouraged? Because we look at ourselves too many times. We look at those around us sometimes of what God's doing in their life or God may be doing in their ministry. And it can begin to get us discouraged and get us looking down at certain things. When we realize that Jesus is going to be the one to give the increase, Jesus is going to be the one to do the work, we realize all we got to do is just go out and be faithful to go. If I'm faithful to stand and preach, what you do with it is up to you. If I'm faithful, we're faithful to go over and, and go to the jail. We get to start going this upcoming Sunday, and, and I'm excited and looking forward to it and can't wait to go. But, you know, we can go in and we can preach till we're blue in the face. We could go in and we could scream, and we can do whatever we wanted to do. But it's up to them and God and what they're going to do with it. We can offer them the help to get out of the situation they're in. We can offer them to help to have a better life. We can offer them to help to do something different with their life. But if they choose not to, that's, up, that's between them and God. Because God is going to be, it should be Jesus is what we see in the productivity. We should just be willing to go because we love him. You know, I talked about, uh, um, I, I think now it's actually going to be in the uh, devotion for Friday possibly that you know as a christian too many times we look at we look at certain things and we should expect certain things as a christian of us we should expect the same thing of god god i'm going to be faithful to go and just let god do the work do we see jesus in our productivity can we see jesus in our problems first peter chapter 5 and verse number 7 casting all your care upon him for he careth for you when we have problems come into our life we have things arise that we didn't see. We have things arise that we never dreamt was going to happen to us. We have things that come up that throw us for a loop. You know, we go home tonight and our washers quit, or we go out and get in our car and our car won't start, or, or whatever it may be. When we have those little bitty simple problems, where do we turn? Where do we turn for that peace that we talked about? Do we turn to other people? Do we turn for our own self-knowledge? Or do we turn to Jesus? That we see Jesus in our problems. See, we have, uh, uh, I heard this today on uh, listening to a separate podcast, and I was talking to uh, Caitlin. We was driving over here, and we passed. There was a car coming down Pleasant Valley, and she said something about a Tesla. I said, did you hear he just bought part of Twitter? And she's like, no, she had no idea who he was even talking about. So Elon Musk, the guy that owns Twitter, the guy that I think owns half of the world's money at this point in time, he bought, or did I say own Twitter? He owns Tesla. And he bought like 10% of Twitter and got set on the board because he kind of believes like as far as freedom of speech and things like that, he believes the same way we do for the most part. And so he bought it because he's going to stop uh, being able to try to keep them from um, wanting to silence anybody on the right, so to speak. If you're a conservative, they don't want anything to do with you. Um, and so, but I was listening to something today and it was talking about he's not going to solve the world's problem. Until people get back to Jesus, it's not going to solve the world's problems. We can try to fix everything we want. You can try to, uh, we could try to lower gas prices and drop inflation, and we could try to do this, and we could, you could try to teach whatever you want to in schools, and you could try to do whatever you want. But until we get back to Jesus, we're not going to fix any of the problems. 
the best way for us to take care of everything that's going on is to see Jesus in our problems. How does God tell us to deal with certain things? How does God tell us to act outside of there? How does God tell us to do certain things when it comes to those decisions we make? Because our problems are only going to be taken care of by Jesus. We have too many people that want to offer their opinions on the problems that are going on in this world. We get back to Jesus, that would take care of a lot of them. See, because when people, when you realize that, that Jesus needs to be the, in control of all of our problems, you realize that we should love each other a little differently than what we do. You know, it's not about judging people, it's about loving people. It's about showing them the love of Christ. It's about letting them see that there's something different for them instead of being confused on the things out in this world. Can you see Jesus in your problems? Let me say this lastly. Can you see Jesus in your plans for your future? In Proverbs chapter number 3 and verse number 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Just because you might see Jesus, as we talked about here earlier, you might see Jesus in your present. Do you see him in your plans for your future? We might, we might be saying, whatever God wants me to do right now, I'm all for. What about what he wants you to do in your future? See, when Paul was on that road to Damascus, he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? He didn't ask him, say, Lord, what do you want me to do right now? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And we know that the, they tells him, says, we want you to go into this city, and we know everything he told him to do, and you know what Paul did? He went and did it. We know uh, of what Paul did, and we know how it changed Paul's life, and we know the story of Paul and everything that he went on to do after that. Do we see Jesus in our plan for the future? Too many times we legislate God right out. You know, for once, I actually took my phone out of my pocket and I gave it to Caitlin, so I don't even have it now. I can't even hold it up. You might look at your calendar tomorrow, and it might be slammed full of everything you got. If your only way is to find time for God is to put it on your calendar, then you need to put him on your calendar. You need to take that time and stop and say, I need to read. I need to take this time to stop and I need to pray. I need to take this time to stop and just spend some time with my God because he's been in my, he is my peace. He is taking care of my problems. He is what has been in my past. He is in my present. We need to make sure we spend time with him and we allow him to be in our future plans. Not God, it is important to know, God, what is it you want me to do right now? But God, what do you want me to do in the future. Before I take this job, God, is this what you want from me? Because the ramifications of the decision I make today might go for years. God, is this what you want me to do? Not only when it has to do with our future, when we think of our future plans, do you see Jesus in your plans for next week? We're supposed to have revival next week. That's on the books, to have revival next week. Brother Bobby Cato isn't bringing revival. Brother Cody Zorn's not bringing revival. The Lancaster family is not bringing revival. Brother Doug's not bringing revival. I'm not bringing revival. It's going to be up to each and every one of us to see Jesus in our future next week for us to have revival. But I'm afraid too many times we already have it in our mind what's going to happen. We're going to come in on Sunday and we already have figured out everything that we will or won't do on Sunday. We already have it in our mind of how good Brother Cody's going to be, Brother Donald, on Monday night and Tuesday night and Wednesday night. We already know how good Brother Bobby's going to be and how he might shout. And we have a feeling that we're just going to get so high, but I'm afraid too many times we all play on emotion. It's all about the emotion of the moment. I don't want to see emotion next week. I want to see Jesus next week. I want to see God show up and do something great. You know, I don't remember the name of the gentleman, if, if somebody here might would even know. I don't remember the name of the, one of the preachers I was reading about uh, for that man who's seen revival, but it was talking how he would go around and he would preach, and I believe it was uh, uh, coal workers, I think is where he was at. And these coal workers were people back then you just didn't mess with, it said Brother Donald. These were just mean, vicious men, Brother Josh. You wanted nothing. If you seen them, you went the other direction. 
And from 100 yards away, he said he just stood out and he just preached to them. He would just tell them. And I don't remember now exactly what the phrase it was, but pretty much you're going to die and go to hell if you don't get saved. And he just stood about 100 yards off or whatever, and he preached to them. And he just hollered at them. And, then, and they slowly kept coming closer. And if I'm not mistaken, the way the story went, the next day, even more of them came out. And the next day, even more of them came out. See, he was just trying to show them the Jesus that they needed for their future. He was just trying to show them the Jesus that they needed in order to be saved. And we've seen, and they've seen a great revival there break out. And, but how much do we see Jesus in revival? How much do we see him next? Is he in our plans for next week? What about the week after? Brother Jordan alluded to it a little bit on Sunday night. Have we already decided exactly what we're going to do the week after? Have we already made up our mind? Well, hey, look, I, I know that I can put off all my housework and I can put off my mowing and my cleaning and, and whatever may be next week because I'll get to it the week after. But why aren't we worried about just maybe having revival the week after or the week after that or the week after that? When was the last time we cleared off our calendar and say, God, we just want you to show up so much, I don't care if we go on for a month, two months, three months, whatever it may be. How much Jesus do we see in our future? Too many times I'm afraid that we, we automatically want to plan out our future and make everything just go by the book and we plan out our day and we leave Jesus completely out of it. All these people, all these different stories we see, they're coming to Jesus. Why? Because they've seen Jesus. I know we can't literally see him. He's not going to literally walk through that door. But spiritually, we should see him every day. Spiritually, we should be looking for him every day. He should be the first thing we think of in the morning, the last thing we think of when we go to bed at night. We should be desiring to see Jesus show up next week. Because he will, Brother Phil, if we desire him enough. This world is in a mess. If we want to see anything done outside these walls, it's going to be up to us. We can't expect the world to want Jesus. We can't expect the world to make changes that we want to make them see if we're not willing for ourselves to go out and show them. If we're not willing to walk out of here uh, after every single night next week just being on fire for God, that when we walk into the workplace, they can say, Whoa, what happened to you last night? You're different. Where'd you do? What, what happened to you last night? To be able to tell them, we was in church. Right. We got to go to church last night. Right. You know, it, it's in the devotion for Friday, unless God changed my mind. I've, I'm going to tell you half of it right now. But it's amazing to me how many people, when you talk about going to church on a Sunday night or a Wednesday night, you go to church on Wednesday night? Yeah. You know, and they want to treat it like, oh, can't believe they make you all go. They, well, they didn't make me go. Nobody made me come to church tonight. You know, nobody made me come. Yes, Brother Doug asked me to preach. I, hey, I, I could have talked to Brother Randy and said, hey, you're going to have to give him, teach him something tonight. I'm staying home, changed my mind. No, we got to come here tonight. It's a privilege to come here tonight. But too many times, we don't see Jesus in our future. Right. We've got everything planned out on what we think we want for our life, what we think we want for next week. We have everything planned out of what we think we want, and we completely leave Jesus out of the picture can you see jesus tonight brother clint you come get a song of invitation we'll invite you to come if you've not seen him in your pardon that's the most important thing you can have tonight if you can't see him in your pardon that time you've given your life to christ we'll invite you to come we'll take a bible and show you what it means to be saved but just can you see jesus in your future can you see jesus in all these things that we talked about well he's picking out a song let's pray our gracious heavenly father lord we do thank you again for this night lord Lord, we're thankful for the scriptures. We're thankful for the word. Lord, we're thankful for uh, Jesus, Lord. Uh, just so wonderful a uh, name to be able to, to speak of, Lord. We're thankful for everything he's done in our life and in our hearts. Lord, we just ask you to speak to hearts now during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.